not going to be crazy. They're going to be like you guys. They're going to be running like that. Hopefully it's not fun.
really drive home. I think someone had to say that. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, well, well, because it, it definitely goes on for a long time. Yeah. So it, it's just screaming out to be sampled. Oh wow! Damn. Yeah. That's, I don't remember that. That's well. That that's from the third album, which is the, the not so good one. Yeah, it's got some. It's just not what you want it to be. No. It just kind of amazes me how unprecious you are about your vinyl. Just <laughs> like you know, some most you know m most of what's on the stack here is not even in sleeves. Just rubbing your fingerprints all over the grooves. It's I could never do that. It's it. Well, it the, 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 that's because they're not they're not worth. <laughs> hey, <thanks laughs> not, man. Well, still, I mean, it's like. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're just making it worth less. Think about fingerprints too. We can always be wiped off. <laughs> yeah, but the corrosion's from the natural oils of your skin. That that's gonna, I guess, you know, a little bit of diluted rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle. Oh yeah. I've got a comb if you wanted. Oh, man. I don't have cooties, just psoriasis, and you can catch that. It's genetic. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I think I'm as good as I'm gonna get. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, you are and you're from where? Oh, I'm psychedelics. I'm born and raised in Chicago. Just about been here my whole life. Alright, now for everybody who's not a moron and doesn't know who this is. Um, okay, I'm sorry, I'm just consulting my cheat sheet. Okay, so. How'd you, how'd you get into this scene? The whole DJ thing? Well, actually, uh... uh I was more thinking the mod scene, but, you know, if you want to get a DJ story, story. I mean, yeah, oh, whichever yeah. you want to do. I okay. mean, it's, uh, you know, your two minutes, so... Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> well, the whole mod scene, I mean, I was just kind of born and raised on the whole... Okay, thing, and, and how'd you start DJing? Actually, the whole DJ scene came from a pristine owner of Lake Bar. She oh. had up. She was working at Holiday Club, another bar in Chicago, and uh, she decided to have us, me and Mo, my old friend DJ, and uh, that's how we got our start. And now she opened up this bar, and this is kind of our regular spot to DJ. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so we at, at this point, I think it should be clear to everybody with you know some decent amount of gray matter that, you know, there is no single, you know, genre for mod music. So what no. would you say your favorite is? My personal favorite? I mean, I definitely do like the Euro and UK, like, Free Beat and Psych. That's definitely where all my money is gone, for sure. Nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. I've definitely spent more than my, more than I should have, for sure. I'm regretting it now, eating a lot of ramen noodles. <laughs> Making sacrifices. Oh yeah, you know, clean living, difficult circumstances. <laughs> yeah, totally. Even if it's like you know, eating ramen over the sink so that you oh, don't man. have to dirty your only plate. Just so I can get that one extra forty-five. <laughs> exactly. Those, those That's what addicts. it's all about. Vinyl addicts are just yeah, it's just as intense. <laughs> all right, so of of uh, our way of thinking, weekenders past. What would you say is your most memorable, or at least most memorable moment? Oh man. I'm going to say, honestly, when I... Don't incriminate yourself, dear. Oh, jeez. <laughs> don't hold part in this interview. Okay. No, um... It's actually, going on the internet, honey. <laughs> right. Okay, there we go. Are we back on the... Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, 
because to me, I'm not a big, a big dancer on the dance floor unless I'm like hammered. But uh, cold sober, I heard my friend Derek spinning. Oh yeah, like, magic potion, and that was that got me on the dance floor like nice. Wave, so that was probably my most memorable moment. Yeah, that's a, that yeah, is a great way to end this. 10, technically 11 year if you count the hiatus stretch, so. It's true, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a, it was a good stretch, but. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm going to try to keep something running in Chicago. Oh, yeah. I mean, if anything else, I'll figure out some reason to come out here every summer, yeah. so. <laughs> we're not, we're not through with this. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's just the old man's taking a rest. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so. You're becoming a responsible adult at the ripe yeah. old age of however the hell old he is. Oh, yeah. We'll leave that disclosed. <laughs> I'm the one who has to work for a cheat sheet here. <laughs> and I don't know exactly get along. Especially oh, they do. I've got plenty of photos to prove otherwise. Okay, so for the people on the internet who have no idea what this is all about, who are you and where are you from? I am Amanda Ott. I am from Baltimore, D.C. in the tri-state area, East Coast. D.C. is not technically a state, dear. Well, <laughs> whatever D.C. is. <laughs> it's an entity unto itself. It's the AIDS capital of America, last I heard. Is it? Well, Baltimore yes. is the syphilis capital of America, so we have... Oh my god! Covered, Detroit we? was the syphilis capital of America, like, during the time I was living there, and that's really sad. You took our syphilis. <laughs> We also took your illiteracy. Yeah, and probably our crime too. God damn! All you got now is hobos, and they don't bother anybody. We also have the highest rate of male prostitution. Yeah, I'm not that desperate. <laughs> <too. laughs> okay, so <laughs> desperate times might call for desperate measures. But I don't yeah, know but like, how many male prostitutes will you know work with women? So <laughs> this is not in your favor, dear. <laughs> Okay, I'm so. For cuddle prostitutes. <laughs> I haven't those yet. Try Craigslist. This is all sorts of weird shit. So, um, let's see. Where, what am I going to ask you for the cheat sheet? You <laughs> I, I just got a cheat sheet here with like some random shit. And, okay, so, um, uh, what would you say your mod philosophy is? Uh, my mod philosophy would be kind of even outside the realms of mod and into. Everything that is creative and unique and just uh, just having style and class and individuality in what you do. That makes perfect sense. Alright, so uh, so why are all the cute guys at the events like heterosexual or taken? There are a lot of married people at this event, actually. I know! But it's not true. There are also there's new, new blood coming in. It's just right, I mean, because, you know, if you yeah. read up on this shit, you know, it started to, with, like, you know, it was degenerates and homosexuals. You just have to be Mrs. or Mr. Robinson. <laughs> I am not that old woman. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting there. <laughs> Actually, I think I'm a few weeks older than you are, so... <laughs> weeks! We're not so there you, yet! Weeks! And so if you call me old... The future, the future is Mrs. and Mr. Robinson. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, so, uh... So this is your, uh, your third weekender, right? Yes. And also your third time DJing. Yes. Yes. Oh, God. So you're, essentially... You're probably in a class by yourself considering this. I don't know, I think most of the people who DJ, you know, are not counting the locals, yeah, it's been, you know. Well, I, uh, understand here, I've been on the event for a long time, and I was going to just come, but then I said, you know what, I'll harass him, and <laughs> tell him I should DJ. Uh, I gave him a few examples of the type of stuff I spit, and he said okay, and then 
thank God he must have liked what I played because I came back. <laughs> nice, nice. Which that that was more exciting for me than playing the first time that I was invited back. Oh, of course. So, uh, what would you say, you know, your favorite memories for these, you know, last three years have been? Oh my gosh, I love the people so much. They're like my family because I've been to other 60s weekenders in Vegas and in Europe and the East Coast, but um, there are usually a lot of snobs that go oh, yeah. unfortunately, because it's for connoisseurs, people who really care about what they listen to, really care about how they dress. So a lot of the times that'll go hand in hand with snobbery. But oh yeah. I don't think it does here. I think everyone here is really just excited about what they love and they want to share it, and that's what it should be. Oh yeah, that's absolutely, and yeah, that's that's where I'm at. So okay, we've bullshitted enough. I'm gonna leave some time on the car for other people. <laughs> Well, the microphone on the camera is a little touchy. I mean, you know, there's sometimes it can't even hear me, you know, two feet from it. So, wow, okay. Okay, so uh, real quick for everybody who might not be aware, you are and where you're from. Uh, Derek C. Mountain View, California. Angeline King, originally from Chicago, Illinois, now Mountain California. All right, so you are you one of the couples that the Weekender made or? Well, in a very indirect way, but not directly. Uh, <laughs> I was a regular. Uh, I think I've been to maybe seven or eight of uh, my... Oh, about family. as many as me then. Yeah, just about, yeah. yeah. Um, and I discovered uh, Mount Chicago online through the website, which I don't even think exists anymore. Um, yeah, not the original one. Yeah, yeah, so I kind of, uh, I was the one going to this every, pretty much every year, and then oh, yeah. we actually met online. And then I introduced him to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so that's kind of how that happened. So, uh, um, I know, uh, I know you DJ a lot and you've, I DJ'd at least some of the times. No, I wish I Really? DJ'd. Okay. I'm a we're pretend. We're in a band I'm, together. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's right. Room. That's right. I'm DJ sorry. I only in my mind. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> when you're at home, at your computer. That's right. I pretend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, so, um, you know, like, uh, like anybody with, you know, a uh, decent brain on them, there's no single um, genre for mod music. What would you say your favorites are? Um, as far as particular songs? Or? Um, yeah, sure. You know, song, you know, subgenre, whatever you want to go with. Sure. I don't know what genres. I just love, I love stacks, and uh, I love Psych, Garage, and uh, yeah, my dad would kill me if I was in Garage. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I pretty much like it all. Yeah, no, sorry. I mean to cut you off. For me, uh, Mod embodies freedom and fun and yeah, expressing expression. yourself. Yeah, expression. So any music that allows those kind of emotions, especially music for dancing, music with good energy, um, music that makes you forget about anything other than what is immediate. That's that's mod music. To me. So all right. It doesn't it doesn't matter if it's soul or rock and roll. It's all it all hits right here as long as it's from the heart. Okay. Um. So uh, uh just because I'm trying to you know conserve a bunch of stuff. Um. So uh, let's wrap this up with you two. And uh, what are your favorite like memories from the Weekenders past or even this what one? Memories? I get drunk. Here. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you and so many others, dear. <laughs> you and so many others. Um, you know, the fact that I've had uh, just so many amazing years with people who were like me. Uh, you know, finding people who had the common interests. That, that, I mean, just being able to share that with, with just a small group of people. It's just been amazing. I'm so, so sad. I'm actually going to cry. I'm so sad. It's <laughs> oh. Yeah. And yeah, for me, it's just meeting people that um, with shared interests that have really great souls and seeing people that you only see occasionally. 
So, All right. Here, pretty much everybody here, I wish I could call up every weekend and say, hey, come over to our place for wine and let's listen to music, but everybody's so spread out, so we just have to yeah, imagine Yeah, I mean, it. some of these people I only see once a year, you know? Oh, yeah. And, I mean, I consider them, like, friends, like, real friends. Absolutely. You know? We have that deep understanding that we're all little mod freaks and we all do oh, this yeah. thing, and I love it, you know? So, yeah, very, very good to miss great things. Oh, yeah. I'm going to uh, tell you, like I've told a bunch of other people, like try to be as loud as you can because the microphone's really touchy and, you know, sometimes it doesn't even hear me. So um, I want to do as little editing to the sound as possible. So uh, just real quick, you know, for anybody who might not be aware, um, who are you, where are you from, and how many years have you come out to this? Um, I'm Ashley Green. Uh, this is my... I think this is his seventh year of the year. Sixth year. Six. His seventh year. <laughs> anyway. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> more long timers like me. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, well, I, I came because of Brian. He's a DJ. Aw. So, to chaperone me now. since the, <laughs> the first uh, time I went and left her at home, I got in a lot of trouble. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, no, <laughs> but it was fine. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm Brian Harris, DJ Midnight Cowboy. Uh, yeah, like I said, been here. For, I think it was the third one. Now, uh, did, did you start DJing? Bef you know, uh, you know, how many? Did, were you coming to this before you started DJing here, or? Uh, I had a good friend, Brian Pouse, that was one of the original Macho Gardner DJs. He was from Atlanta and a friend of mine. And uh, he talked it up so much, I just had to be a part of it. And I, uh, John Manning was running it at the time, and I sent him a couple of mixed CDs. And, and uh, he passed them on to Eric, and, and they both approved, and I was on that year. Okay. Um, so do you want to have one of the more you know asked questions or one of the less asked questions? Uh, you pick. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go with the mower ask because I can. I've gotten into this rhythm already. So, how'd you get into the whole, you know, scene? Either the, you know the mod thing or just DJing. You know, however you want to answer it, pretty much. I have been involved in the skinhead and uh, scooter scene since I was a late teenager. Okay. Uh, Chapel Hill and Durham, North Carolina, and uh, I've been DJing since I was 18 years old. Before that, if you count tape DJing, but uh, actually collecting <laughs> records and. and DJing on vinyl since I was 18. So, uh, was it 94? 93, 94, yeah. Older than me, that's so, yeah, all I need to know. And, uh, I was born into it, really. My very first record was, uh, Revolver. Oh, nice. And, um, and you were what, three? No, no, no. I, that was the day I was born. Okay. My mom is a, plays piano, and so I just grew up with music, and I thought I was kind of the only one. Uh, and certainly in Raleigh, North Carolina. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that cared about this stuff. And so uh, and then I met Ryan, and, uh, and then I just started coming to the event. Oh, yeah. So uh, what would you say your favorite records are? You know, either to spin or just to hear? <laughs> I'm going to let him uh, <laughs> Short list, keep it like three, maybe four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one track, or yeah, no, um, Jigsaw, One Way Street, is a song I heard the first time I DJed here. Tony the Tiger played it, and uh, I very, very quickly grabbed that one up. I played it here a couple of years, it was played by somebody else this year. Okay. That's one of my all time favorites there. Um, I'm too ADD to keep track of which <laughs> ones are actually on the top of my, my list at any one time. Yeah, it changed. <laughs> <laughs> How many records do you think you have? 
Yeah. Fewer and fewer if I can sell them. <laughs> keep, keep the best no, ones. Keep buying. <laughs> Here's our website. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, do you, do you have any like you know fondest memories of the weekend, or or do you just want to you know like you know a couple of people just you know said their you know you know their uh, you know their their gratitude for all this. So yeah, definitely meeting Eric was was an amazing thing. Um, yeah. We've become very close friends over the years, and he's come down to North Carolina several times. Oh, nice. And uh, the same thing. We've been up here for things other than the, the weekend. So oh yeah. We spend time with him. Um, the very first weekender I DJed at, at that point I was still just a uh, soul and reggae DJ. And that was my introduction to rock music as dance music. I've always been <laughs> into garage and psych and stuff. But that was really when I decided to start playing a lot of that. So now it's about half of my set. Okay. Nice. Nice. Do you have any of your own memories to share or just. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean. We had not been dating that long. Okay. And, uh, so one of the one started, of the couples so. the weekender made. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, I didn't think so. Well, at least it helped. That's yeah. Sure. Because this is our only vacation a year, pretty much. Okay. And so it's our alone time. So it's it's always kind of a really alone time with a couple hundred of your closest yeah. friends from the uh, internet. Yeah. I mean, makes it all the oh yeah. Not like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh no, no, we're not perverts. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just, I have so many memories. It's just a great event, and there are a lot of great people that I've met. So I'm thankful yeah. for all of it. It makes me, you know, kind of sad. Is there anybody you hope might take over, like maybe not in Chicago, but you know, some kind of weekend or somewhere? Or? It'd be nice if there was a similar type of weekend, a good combination of soul and rock music. But, oh yeah. Well, that's that's what's really made it different. Oh, you folks know, there's tons of new soul weekenders and stuff like that around, but very few. Yeah. They combine various styles. And, and oh yeah. Just accept so many different people into the family. Yeah. Chicago. It seems like people who've been multiple times, Mod Chicago is part of them. Oh yeah. It's a family. Oh yeah. Okay, I think I've I've spent more camera time on you than anybody else so far. So, <laughs> well, you've got great answers. So. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna wrap this up and try and waste some more footage on other people. So. <laughs> So, will you tell us your name and where you're from? <laughs> uh, Rowan McElroy from all over, but this year I'm out from uh, Lansing, Michigan. All right. And so, I'm looking at your list. <laughs> I know, my handwriting's beautiful. I should have gotten it for a medical degree. So, how'd you get into 60s and mod culture? Ah, uh, um... I don't know, and there's no way to like make it, you know, that short, but a uh, brief synopsis is like, uh, I was raised by a mother who was like really into Frank Zappa, Captain Beefheart, Alice Cooper. Nice. Um, one way around, I mean, I had a really dorky taste in music when I was a little, little kid. Somehow it got better. It started with The Who and The Kinks. For a while, I kind of took a hiatus from that, I was into the... Um, LA death rock scene for a little bit, but eventually I came back home, and I have Dexy's Midnight Runners to thank. So, well, I'm going off your list for a second with a question because I'm curious. Because I'm curious. So, how would you say? How would you say it's different for you know our parents who were into '60s music in the '60s, and us so much later into '60s music again? Um, I. I think, you know, the, um, the the younger generation definitely seems to have a bit more of a, you know, you know, I mean, it's different when you experience something than when you, uh, when you understand it from a historical perspective. So, um, you know, I think, you know, like, you know, people who were there in the 60s, like, I know my, my parents sort of were, I mean, my father was there in the 50s, but <laughs> my parents were like 40 when I was born, so, uh. You know, I mean, you know, you know, it's like you were there, that's what you were doing, 
but you know when you're coming at it you know much younger it's you know it's you know suddenly it's suddenly exciting it's something nobody else is doing and you get to basically flex your nerd muscles and you know learn all the history like you know as it you know actually unfolded behind the scenes that maybe your parents weren't aware of so I mean I you know that you know there are, there are pros and cons to it so I don't think like any you know one generation's got it better than the other it's just you know the way it is so what's your favorite mod chicago uh, and then there goes the bus yeah what's your favorite mod chicago memory oh uh so many so many the first year i was here um i had met somebody else who kind of gravitated towards this from the goth scene she had a sisters of mercy tattoo on the back of her that's, neck. A, that's an interesting transition oh, yeah. what do you think about that transition does that <laughs> Was um, that a common transition, or...? Actually, like, from my super scientific research on the internet, it's a little more common than you'd think. Yeah. Um, I think one of the main, um, you know, transitional musicians for that whole thing would be, like, Nick Cave and the sure. Bad Seeds. I mean, you know, I mean, when you consider, you know, like, before he was in the birthday party, and the birthday party even kind of had a very, like, you know, jazz, garage rock kind of feel, you know, yeah. a lot of their stuff. You know, I mean, well, and he also did a lot of 60s covers. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah. You know, Boys Next Door was pretty much, you know, a 60s and power pop cover band until they absorbed Roland S. Howard and kind of got a little bit more, you know, introspective lyrics and a lot more original stuff. I mean, so. But yeah, in my experience, that's, you know, that's actually like fairly common. A bit more common than a lot of people might think at first, anyway. I mean, and if you think about it, I mean, you know, the. You know, that kind of, you know, appreciation for the darker parts of, you know, uh, culture, you know, kind of started up, you know, mid to late 60s. Sure. You know, Anton LaVey was, you know, making, you know, moderate headlines, not as big as he thought anyway, like, you know, 66, 67, you've got, uh, uh, you know, bands like uh, uh, Raven out of Germany, um, you know, and their, their, you know, big song, The Witch, was covered by uh, Rosetta Stone in 89, I believe. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of crossover appeals. So, so what's your mod philosophy? <laughs> oh, I, um, oh, I, I, it's, you know, I'm, I'm so wanting to weenie out of that one and just say, go read my it's, blog. Dude, I it's on your out. list. <laughs> I wrote the fucking thing myself, but uh, so uh, I mean I go into a lot of philosophical, um, you know, um, sort of diatribes on my blog. Uh, I come at this a lot, you know, from very much, you know, like a, you know, very late fifties, you know, proto, you know, modernist sort of existentialist, you know, perspective. Um, you know, I see a lot of, thank you, <laughs> um, you know, and I see a lot of um, how I've just kind of been influenced by um by the you know whole idea of um you know just uh you know doing your own thing and making it you know like sort of this fashionable anti-fashion it's like you know you're picking up what um you know right now i think you know i mean if you want to talk about you know like this you know um mid 60s generation it was it was very mainstream by that time but I see a lot of people now just picking up on the more obscure things, so, um, you know, it's just like, you know, doing, you know, you know, uh, God, God damn, I, <laughs> I have no idea how I was going to answer that other than, hey, go read my blog, because <laughs> I'm too stupid to, you know, right. think about it without thinking about it. <laughs> so if you had to pick one band or one track that really, like, is just the ultimate for you. I know it's hard to pick one, but if you had to, what oh, would you pick? Yeah, it's hard to pick just it's hard to pick just one. Okay, five or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think the I think the one that like really you know set me going, you know you know like you know returning to the whole scene was uh, uh tell me when my light turns green by Dexy's Midnight Runners, um, one that will always uh, get me up and dancing is uh, um, Mary Wilson's Ecstasy. Um, I've been really getting into the, you know, compact organization label lately. So, I mean, yeah, I, that's the, one of the reasons I've been coming here for like eight years now, and I've never DJed because 
it just because like I, I just don't want to you know get a rejection letter from Eric because like you know I it's I, you know saying something like I guess it's mod in a way but it, you're really weird. <laughs> well, it's like you like a lot of like the '80s stuff too. That's you right. know, '60s influence. Oh, yeah. Which yeah, and, like what's the difference from the '80s stuff and the um, '60s stuff? That's I th I th the '80s influence '60s stuff. I, I think I think a lot of the like the really famous '80s stuff, like you know, Secret Affair, The Jam, um, even the Lambrettas, Merton Park is. I think there was a point where it was very formulaic for a while. You know, very much. You know, I, I've talked to people about this before. That you know, there's um. You know, there's there's being part of a subculture, and then there's part of like you know being, you know, part of a reenactment party. And it's like you know, if you're gonna be that formulaic, um, you know, you're pretty much you know just reenacting. You know, if you're basing everything off of exactly what people were doing, and usually when you run into people who are basing it off of exactly what people were doing then, you know, it's it's even kind of late when you're talking, you know, they're talking about the originals, and it's not even, you know, the original, you know, you know, first version of the scene. It's like after the scene became popular and exploded. So they're like really copying a like, watered down version of things. So speaking of that, leaving my hotel tonight, someone <laughs> asked Alex and I if we were going to a costume party. Do you ever get stuff like that? Oh, I, I get all sorts of comments. Um, I, I, you know. How do you respond to stuff <laughs> like that? Uh, I respond to stuff like that by, um, usually I just laugh or um, I've gotten to this point where I can just laugh off anything people have to say about me because. Yeah, I've been looking ridiculous more than half my life at this point. If you know, if if you can make it to thirty and still have a big thumb up your ass about what people think about you, then you're doing something wrong. So, <laughs> well, I think I need a cigarette break. So yeah, now, so, do so. <laughs> so do I, because my voice isn't hoarse enough. 